Greetings, everyone. I'm Hello. Coco Lau. I'm Key Lady. And we're Rare Birds. Today, we're going to teach you the fundamentals of home recording under $500. Oh, yeah. How to make a beat, how to learn your cables, uh, what you can record on, how to get a track out into the internet to your family, to your friends. We move on to the mixer yep. so that we can record all the things at once mm -hmm. you know can record uh through a heftier signal usb and we can record in or out of the rcas onto the task really need to know how to wire the, the cables flow. cables and make sure that you have quality the cables. quality cables and you wrap them and you know which ones can flip inside of each other we buy the guitar center one yeah they, we buy the guitar center they give us, those things are so you know and that's, that's a lifetime the, that's warranty the guitar right center there. hat so this thing is super powerful Highly recommend an outside source to record on. Mm -hmm. It is very recommended because computers crash all the time. I can get you a whole segment of sad stories about how somebody's computer crashed and we still have every single piece of data we ever had because we have it on its separate device. This runs off batteries. Damn, you ain't seen that. Okay. Oh, no. This runs off batteries. I can take this anywhere I want. I used to have house sitting gigs a lot. Top of the piano and record off these two tiny mics right here and record Yo, tons of jams like that. But this is a really powerful cable here. This is a RCA. RCAs have multiple uses. Just like this. I'll sneak on everyone just like this, okay? I'll be like, oh shit. This is getting this is getting pretty hot. Basically A B input into here. Okay? And then out of here, right? I'll just be like, oh shoot, this beats hot. This B cable right here will be connected to this computer like this right here into this USB on this mixer. Boom, it turns on, okay? It's all batteries, everything's going. Okay. I arm it here, boom, boom. I do usually two, two beats armed i just like stereo. to be a stereo version those of it are mono. and i'll turn it up into here and i'll just be like i'll just press record just like you do when you're a tape when it's a tape player you just press record and play at the same time oh yeah there's our oh, setup well oh, that's a well that's that's one of one the, of our setups yeah one of, one our, of our many setups yeah. Yeah. we don't even have to have a mic actually because of these mics that. Yes, built you, in. You can literally do a scratch song like this and just sing. I'm gonna it. say this. I mean, this is how like, like based you could get. I'm saying those little like earbud headphones. You got your phone. It's basically a phone headphone. You can mic. You could even record into that mug right into here. That's that's how like based you can get with the you can get. Right. What I mean by based. So this simple. is this will run you anywhere from 150 200. to 300 dollars right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's in the sequencer now. Corinne's really showing off right now. It's okay. Um, so, like, the process I'm doing right now, because uh, some people, like, I'll start with the basic rhythm first. Like, as far as, like, the hi-hat, um, I start with, like, a real basic hi-hat, real basic rhythm. And then once I start getting like all my sense and everything, I start really getting a pattern that I like. I mean, I, I love Fruity Loops. When it comes to beat making, I recommend getting your feet wet into as many dolls as possible. You're gonna get to know the, again, like the genetic makeup, the coding of that particular software. And you just gonna figure out what works for you. You know, there's some that I'm not a fan of that other people swear by, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I like that. I got myself a little loop there. So how I usually do, I'll arm it. And arm recording is the same everywhere. That's the tight part. Oh, see, sometimes it'll fuck up. It'll be like, oh damn, I came in too early. What 
is definitely make sure your cables are always in order, okay? Make sure that you do thorough research on your music equipment because sometimes you don't know. Lots of versatility with your cables and your inputs. I prefer a mixer that has its own USB drive because not only can I use this live, but I can also use this in my studio, so it's double usage for me. I always say simpler is better when it comes to recording. Make sure, first off, any great song, number one, the vibe. The vibe is where it's at. You have to create the muse and you have to be your own muse and you have to know that you wanna put something in the world here. So you have to be intentional. That's another trick that a lot of people, and it's not overly thinking it. It's like, let me, it took me years. Also, it took me years to know what I wanted and know how to, to channel it, to give it to somebody else simply. If you want to use all reverb, then use all reverb so that you can, that's how we did it. We got so many focal effects and effects that we had to like learn how to deal with a lot of frequencies. Also, know your coding. Know what DAW you want. Know what sound you want. See, I could hear somebody's beat and know when they've used Logic or Fruity Loops or Ableton. or Ableton. I can tell there's something about it. Hanging out with Corinne doing music for over six years, seven years now, mm -hmm. and I just probably like two months ago un understood sequencing and how to, how to use MIDI took me a lot of years so be patient with yourself is number one but make sure that you're making something that you like first off just make things that you love and stop making cover songs please don't do it nobody wants it nobody needs it nobody deserves it make your own unique content so those are the kinds of things you know stay hydrated and know that music is a gift from the universe for us all to capture and have and when you become a recording musician and you become a recording producer, you become a time traveler. Okay, so here we are just using the Tascam, mostly to record all the things that we need to be recording. Uh, for instance, any kind of instrumentation, any kind of vocals, any kind of room. We, there's con get condenser mics on the front of this, and this is the single most important thing to home recording. So I highly recommend that you buy one of these. It's a Tascam DP008X. They also come in six and they come in four, but it's like an old school tape player, except it has um, SD cards. You have a uh, phantom power. You got uh, two inputs on the back to record simultaneously. There's a mastering key. There's EQ. There is panning and there are choices of reverb that you can use while you're recording. Um, this is a single most important thing that we use. It's a, it, it has got us out of a lot of problems so that we don't really need the computer to rely on recording because we use the SD card. And the SD card has all the things that we need to save all the beats. It saves beats 
besides our terabyte so we can wave file them and put them into something like audacity or something like uh any kind of other reaper or other things that you can edit your sounds with and so there's two condenser mics on the front so you can actually don't even need a microphone to use this thing you can record your whole band or or just a session of people talking with the a and b condenser mics on the front of it and it's just a simple little switch that you can switch over and it works really well i prefer the high quality sound that it gives me um, there's things to boost the sound and that's in editing but i always have the sd card and the the Tascam, I always have the beat. So when my computer crashes, then um, you know I can always use the the Tascam. So here we have the XLRs on the back, RCAs on the back, headphone jack on the back, and you can go from line or to XLR. And it also has a foot switch pedal, which I've never personally used, but some people like foot switch pedals. Also runs on batteries, so it's mobile, which was a huge thing for uh, Corinne and I to be able to have a mobile studio and you can use it anywhere you can use it in a closet you can use it taking it other places or just use it to just simply record vocals or vi you know anybody just talking podcasts I've recorded podcasts with it I've recorded whole bands with it I've recorded rooms with it and the XLRs on the back are nice. It's A, B, so it has eight channels that are single channels, but it's A, B, A, B, A, B. So you have, once you record your beat into it from like a DAW or a raw beat, then you can also just record your vocals into it any way you like. So it gets it through. So, and it's really easy to use. Like I said, it runs like a tape. It's a record play type of thing. And, um, I can't tell you how many situations this particular equipment has got me out of because it's it's hard to rely on your computer all the time for that hard backup for your beats because it takes up a lot of space and then with the SD card you don't have to you don't have to worry about it as much you can I mean the SD card is tiny which is a problem and I'm grateful that I've never lost anything but I have uh, I have a way of keeping track of them and many people do they're I mean it's like a USB it's hard to keep track of and it's it's pretty uh, fun to use and like I said it runs off batteries you can it also has a plug-in but the batteries are really convenient only four batteries so you can take it up into the woods with you if you needed to or anyone's house and just record your guitar or bass right into it which is super convenient, you know, if you don't have any electricity where you're at or where you want to be, like uh, in a home studio. And so it makes it really versatile. And it's just single most important thing. So, yeah, it will run you from like anywhere to $150 to $300 for a off-board uh, music device like this. Cause it, and it's a very good investment especially if you already have a computer because computers are like cars you can't put too much wear and tear on a certain type of computer because otherwise it will crash on you and it won't be you can't use it forever and the Tascam gives you another backup way to back it up and I also back it up on a terabyte I'm really into data and the backup it's a super good idea to get yourself in a good habit of backing up your beats backing up everything because nothing is that stable when it comes to computers um, so it runs much like a mixer board you know so that you can this is a much more versatile thing this does not record things it does on a, onto a hard disk but it is a mixer board which is has four XLRs on it RCAs and then quarter inches left right and also effects processor and an EQ so and the reason why we got this particular mixer uh, was that it had a USB in it so you can run your beats through a USB on the back of it and have like that kind of control and then while we're playing live 
uh, we can use the effects on board or it's just a super versatile thing so and the Mackie is really good it runs um, you can have the sub out separate from the top ends which is always convenient and it's always helped us out we run our own sound on stage so and you can record directly from this so you can record onto the task camp from this which we do a lot too because there is nice preamps in this so we can run it through there and effects um, I like the Mackie because it has mute buttons that's very convenient I don't know if the fader knobs are my favorite or not my favorite yet I've never really decided I have another one that's like knobs rot rotary knobs and I, I don't know I, I'm undecided but it does only have high mid and low EQ and it only has one high Z which for this it's good but I mean because they still have RCA's on it which are and effects so it runs its own EQ which is very convenient so that if something's kinda you know wonky or something you can have direct control of the out EQ on everything so that it works correctly you know and the Mackie also uh, has its own effects which I think they're very generic but also very generic so it makes them nice and nothing really squirrely about them or too much and you have enough control over it that um, and also don't ever forget the breaker is probably on is probably why it's not working the breaker is probably on it has a breaker it has effects return sound uh, send returns so you can add more effects to it too but uh, I find the onboard effects are efficient and mixer boards are very important for recording and for being able to mostly get out of things and get into things so that you know how much is coming in and when you're recording your uh, live band or when you're playing live this particular machine helps us and those are the outs of it a like USB like I was talking about the main left and right those actually run the sub out uh, if you need them to run separately from the main out which is interesting to me and I thought that was a very cool thing that Mackie did. Oh, I forget it's only 8 channel. Damn, I use all those channels. Um, it, I mean, this is a very nice mixer. Mixers are cool because it, it helps you with signal flow. It helps you start to grasp and not be intimidated by how much energy you're pumping in or pumping out of something and being able to capture in one single uh, volume and it helps you get around a lot of like digital things and you definitely need them when you use your own synthesizers because synthesizers are squirrely and they get out of control and USB is very convenient which I don't really use computer on stage anymore because like I said it's unreliable always breaks and it's always something's always going on with it so that's why I always recommend to have a few different ways to like come in and out of it. This is my Soundcraft. I use this one for my synthesizers mostly because it doesn't have a kill mute. This one is not as convenient for vocals, but it is cool because it has two high Z's that come out of it, and I piggyback it to the other Mackie so that I have more outputs. Um, usually I plug in Corinne on the other Mackie when we're playing live, and this one we plug all our bleep bloops and synthesizers in this one the rotor no, rotary knobs are sufficient for this and the, uh, the the effects on this are actually weak and um, they're not that that fun really they're kinda they're, they do a job and they you know you can add a little reverb here and there but it's just not consistent and I didn't really get it for the effects so cool thing you can count the delay on this one and the gain structure is easy but I got it mostly for the high Z's because it has two high Z's so I can run things that like for instance I can run my computer out of it and I can run because you need a high Z to run a computer and that's why the USB is good this one has a USB which it needs uh, updated software to use it which is lame and that was why the Mackie was more convenient but I still get this for the high Z 
and certain instruments because then I can play my bass direct through it in the high Z or any kind of instrument that needs power or your or like I said you can I usually plug my computer into that first outlet right there for the gain and uh, yeah this is this is a nice mixer too it has RCA still one RCA no out RCA though only in which is interesting and that's another thing with the Mackie so as you can see that's why I would show you another mixer so you could start to understand that like you start to have to realize what each mixer does so they there's three different mixers that we showed you in this one each one is different one does just recording only one helps you play live a little bit better this one has enough inputs and outputs so that you can play your synthesizers live and we piggyback it also I heard this this one was good for uh, podcasting if you do that um, but I, I find that the RCA's don't work as well as on the Mackie but they work great for my synthesizers all these mini synthesizers are great they need a special cord to run or high Z so that you can get the most meat out of them and they're kind of bleep bloopy so they kind of have like a kind of a computer gamey sound but also really fun to play and the drum machine can get really banging if you get it going Corinne's really good at sequencing this one's the vocal keys um, it's really fun it has the sort of like a it's fun to sync but you gotta get it just right and the knobs on this one are great the, so you, once you get something synced you can move it around and change it and maneuver it the drum machine works great All, um, I, I really like the bass drum on this and the clap is fun and well it's just fun sounds and an FM synth this thing's squirrely but it does have FM synthesis in it in a tiny little box and these all run with a eighth inch out which is the stereo out and this is the drum machine which is a large march here very hardy rolling drum machine super cool you can mix it in and out how loud you need the beats how and I usually use this drum machine as the brain for all of those synthesizers because it's the most uh, powerful synthesizer we have really and it starts the beat then that's the best that's the best way to do it is start the beat with the drums um, this doesn't need too much it's got really good preamps out of it and if you are familiar with sequencing this thing is so fun because it does have it does have its own mixer board on it so that you can oh I don't want no clap in it oh I do want clap in it you can mix that in and out which in the other drum machine the Korg one it doesn't have nearly as much versatility as this you know once you once you make a beat that's the beat you know this beat maker you can like mix it in and out runs more like like a mixer so that's why we're showing you that and this has so many ins and outs and external outputs and it's just like I said it's versatile um, the TR8 is just it was a gift from a friend and we're really grateful to have it um, we're putting it in here because you know just to show you how to hook different things up and that you can make beats without a computer or with a computer like we're not for or against either one we're just we just want people to make music and make beats um, this this particular machine I use the MIDI which works as a very great clock and I you have to run it right with the Korgs and that's a whole nother thing that you have to learn about like the kind of progression you need and it runs off USB so you can reprogram it doesn't have a through MIDI just has it in and out which is fine because it I usually just run the clock from the out I don't usually plug anything in it um, so it's it's a cool machine and it's fun when we're playing our beats live and it's fun to make live beats with that it. it's it's a really versatile machine also has its limitations because it's just four on the floor and you can change it up but it's always you know trying to get it to swing or do other things with it is is interesting but we mix it uh, it's fun to mix though because it does like the Mackie and the Soundcraft and the Tascam they all have you know uh, ways to mix the bus into it this is the K oscillator 
the top one as a, and then a, a small ribbon scent on the bottom. Gakken. The cake the Koi Oscillator is a fun machine. Like anybody can play it. Um, and that's good actually because it causes you to be able to you know have a lot of in between and everything and there's drums knocked into it you can start a party that way you can do a lot of uh, maneuvering that way it has different gates and different sounds and percussion and different keys you can play you can you can change it up the one thing about the chaos later that is a little bit limited I think is um, the looping works pretty good but the SD card on it is a 2 gig SD card which doesn't really help <laughs> with anything really um, but learning the machine is fun because you can change the chords and the the progressions that are on it you can have you have different different styles that you can and there's so many ways out of it you can MIDI it you can USB it we usually just RCA out into the send return and we get a good result that way because there's a you know, we just usually do it with volume because there's no need to put more effects on this thing because it is just purely effects. Um, we've made quite a few beats with it. Usually we use it for salsa for, well, that's what we call it. We call it salsa when we put something on top of it and that's just a little fun. You know what I mean? And uh, this is a fun machine. I highly recommend this. It's like it's a good machine just to keep in your repertoire or on stage with you because it's always like, you know, it's always going to be there for you. It's like once you learn it and also it's just like pure wholesome fun like this. This is a wholesomely fun instrument to play. And this Gakken, this thing is wild. It's so cool. It's the most simplest machine ever. I got it for $25. It's so loud. Like, dang, it's loud. You only need, you don't even need a high Z with it. But... It's squirrely as hell, but also sounds really cool and really teaches you a lot about synthesis. The LFOs are really cool on it, the the cutoffs, the pitch, and it's a pure rhythm sense. So when you run your finger along the bottom with the metal touch to it, it does its thing. The top one on here is a TC Helicon Guitar Live. You can plug uh, your vocal, it's a vocal effects processor, but you can also plug a guitar or bass into it. Um, and the bottom one is a synthesizer for a, a guitar or bass. Um, the vocal effects processor is super fun to play with. Um, great stage performer, makes you sound modern. Uh, you know, a lot of tricks and whistles on it. It's also a loop station. It's also a practice station. You can see how many notes you're hitting correctly. And the other one, uh, the other pedal down on the bottom, the little boss pedal, boss pedal is over there. Uh, that's a synthesizer pedal, which it has four knobs, but there's like inner knobs on those. So you can mix in how much of the synthesis you want. There's like, like seven or eight different kinds of synthesis and how much decay you're getting from it. But the TC is the prime processor that we have it's uh quite expensive um it always runs about 300 dollars usually um i recommend the metal ones i don't recommend the digital the uh newer digital ones but i do recommend these play live ones there's a one that's also blue um this thing is really can condition you to to like have the vocal effect that you use while you're on stage or in the booth and it also works as a preamp and the love the one thing I have a complaint about this thing is first the back is horrible the the the, the soldering on it is awful and also you never you never know so you can plug in MIDI you can plug your guitar through mics outs also, you can plug headphones or you have an auxiliary. The auxiliary is cool, so like if you wanted to play along with yourself with another song, you can practice vocals with it. And it has everything from reverb to to like T-Pain to Eminem's voice effects to Cher's voice effects to... It really brings you to the level of vocal effects that like 
you're used to hearing in popular music. Um, <laughs> this thing is super cool. The bass synthesizer, you can keep going on, uh, on this thing forever. We once hooked it up to our drum machine and got some cool things out of it. We hook it up to our bass. We hook it up to vocals. As long as you can hook it up to something, this thing is fun. Like that's just the VEX processor. It runs off of a standard nine volt uh, plug, which is, you know, it, it is what it is. You have to buy those on the side all the time. But it is also, it's fun to have like a cool effect like this and to be able to be versatile in effects and know that you have your onboard effects, you have your vocal effects, you have effects for your bass and use effects for texture and for fun so here's our mics mic cable our inputs uh, we have a condenser mic that we use uh, these are all pretty much like s and beat you know basic mics right there they are wear and tear on them they I've had some of these mics over a decade probably like 20 years um, so if you have a mic for 20 years it's probably pretty good I bought it for hundred dollars the Audix 2, I still have that mic, and the Seisenhower, and the Lewitt. The Lewitt's our newest mic, it's a condenser mic that we've been recording on. Uh, way more expensive than we're used to playing. We used to have a small condenser mic we used to play on, uh, record with, and through the TC into the Tascam. So that's how we st first started recording. I recorded four doors, four wheels off the Audix. So it doesn't, it matters what mic you use, but it also doesn't. It matters mostly how your intention is behind your music or how much energy or what you're putting into it. Now, learning your cables is the most single hand important thing that you need to do. These are all cables for the K oscillator, the TC, the, uh, and they're all wrapped nice, um, the this is the cable for our mixer and our for the soundcraft mixer for the other mixer and this is an important thing for you to understand is that cables are all different they run on different polarities not all cables are created equal some of them are 9 volt some of them are 12 volt some of them are reverse polarity some of them are polarity on the inside so this one is specifically the TC Helicon it has a strange polarity to it so it's a uh, positive on the outside and then negative on the inside which is interesting and extremely hard to find and also very expensive when you when you break it which just recently happened um, it's important to learn your cables these are MIDI cables different kinds of sync MIDI cables also important to learn um, the difference between a 5-pin MIDI cable and a sync cable because the sync is just the tempo cable. The MIDI talks the notes and everything else. And at first it's very intimidating until you get your hands wrapped around it and your head wrapped around it until you like start plugging things in. And that's the most important about a part about home recording. You know, you need RCA cables, you need XLR cables. That's an RCA to two quarter inch cables, if they're stereo cables. This is an important thing in home recording because you need to be able to get yourself in or out of any situation to be able to record and to to utilize the versatility of the Tascam and the Mackie. And also your recordings and what kind of instruments you play and who's playing at the instrument. Um, all these cables are RCA to quarters right here we use for the K oscillator. Also we use it to record directly off the Mackie onto the Tascam. Very important cable. I have like three of those hopefully somewhere. Uh, and it always gets me out of a situation. Like no matter what. The RCA to quarter inches is a, is a big winner when it comes to being able to be like, huh, how can I get this done? Can I record this way? The RCAs Great stereo cables are very underrated. These are not balanced, but they work really good. You could get loud out of them. Um, I still use a lot of RCA cables for most, uh, mostly the Tascam uses the RCA cables to come out of. And also most stereos have RCA. This is an XLR balance cable. Um, 
This is for microphones or DI boxes or plugging into, if you want to plug into any big sound system, you're going to need a DI box for, and they always accept XLR cables because they're balanced. And they just work, um, they're reliable and they work really well. Um, we always get the live uh, cables from the guitar center. It's like the one thing guitar centers. This is the main cable we use for our, our Korgs. This is this quarter inch to stereo eighth. Those are not stereo outs. Those are single outs. So, but this was a hack we learned from our friends in New Mexico. You could come out of something like the Korg and make a good meaty sound. Uh, the cable with the purple one is a quarter inch stereo to an eighth inch stereo. The green cable is a instrument cable which has just a single line on it so isn't balanced. It's just for uh, playing guitar. I use it for my other bass guitar and you can't use a two-ended cable that these are stereo quarter inch cables. And the middle one uh, with the black, with the purple, that's an RCA to eighth inch. And those are very important cables too. Those will get you out of a lot of situations uh, or get you into a situation. This is like reversing. Yeah, it's recording running. Okay. All right, first things first, I'm gonna plug my computer in and it's plugged in through this little jack here. And I got a high Z on this outlet here. So that plugs my computer in. This is from this mixer to this mixer. This mixer is running my outs for my Tascam it's running my outs for my speakers and my outs for my subwoofers. So I got, <laughs> I got the subwoofers plugged into the back here and I got my uh, Yamaha speakers plugged into the main out here. So it routes it that way. This is what this, this particular mixer is just to set up my speakers at my house. I can also plug anything into her, but I have it piggybacked with my Soundcraft and I have this so when it's time to record all of these things in my vocals I just plug this right into my Tascam right here with the quarter inches from this is all the way to the RCA out tape out of my mixer so and first things first, I'm going to plug my Roland in. It has two single outs, so I'm going to plug it in left and right. If I wanted just to plug in mono, I would have to use a stereo cable, which would have one, two of these instead of just one. Now it's stereo because there's two. One, two. Still show that one more time, love. Um, no, just show it. One, two. Now it's stereo because there's two of them. Great. And there's one line. Now, if there was just one, there'd be another black circle here, and that would run a stereo out, which this is what this is running. See? One, two. Grounded. Great. Stereo. Yeah. So, that's my main out to this speakers. So, first things first, I'm going to plug my TR-8 in into line 7, 8. You know, got my red and my red are the same mono, mono, then left, right. So shorter cable for less, this, less drama. Um, I'm going to plug. All right. So the Roland, I plug that into my. So I'm going to plug this in. This is if we're making a beat at home. So here, this is how we're gonna do it. We're just gonna be able to mix a beat from either my computer or raw. 
This is my stereo, this is not my, for my controller here, for my bass. So I'm gonna plug that in line four, because it doesn't need a high Z. This is a high Z, push that down. I'm gonna, this high Z. See, I have two high Z's on that. That's why I got this, So, because I need a high Z. When I'm using a computer, you actually need a high Z. I can't just plug the computer into this other one without getting something like this. This is 1 8 stereo to 2 quarter out. Now it becomes stereo because there's two. So I can plug it in the line 5 6. Once again, gray on the bottom, red on top. Just keep and, it uh, consistent. Just for like rule of thumb, what is red and what is gray? Like red is usually right, le uh, gray is usually so, left. Uh, just gray is right, negative, red. positive, right? Yeah. yeah, right, red. It's just what speaker it's going to. Right, exactly. So now I'm. In order for these Korgs to get a meaty sound, I learned that you have to have this stereo to this. Uh, a quarter to a left right right so I now plug that in and then I'm gonna I'm gonna link it all MIDI Thank you, Lou. so this is a MIDI cable mm. yeah, five pin go. MIDI cable perfect okay and I'm gonna go out of my drum machine because that's going to be my brain and my clock. I'm going to go out, MIDI out. It, it's really, you got to be, these are fragile, so you got to be real gentle. Delicate yet firm. Delicate and firm. Straight on. This is going to run the clock for my Korgs and my uh, bass synth right here. And this is a 5-pin MIDI. I'm going to sync it with the, the, the MIDI. So this is running the time on this. So now if I turn this on, um, it'll, it's over here. Yeah. You're, the you're button. Right. Yeah, oh, you're it's right. the click button. Mm -hmm. this, one's a, this one's the Yeah, that one's the button. Okay. And turn all these on. Yeah. Get blinky. Mm -hmm. This is on. Yeah, this is on. Okay. So it's at 146. So this will this light will be 146. That's this is this and this uh, are gone together. This one, see how it's off? There's no way it's reading this. So how I do that is these single cables here. Okay. So I go. This is MIDI in, so I need to get out, sync out, sync in. Now these are the same tempo, reading the clock. And it's reading from the drum machine, that clock. So sync out, sync in. This one has an in. So in order for me to read the clock, I'm going to have to sync out to sync in here. And then I need the, the cable for that. And just for clarification, so uh, this is out, this is in, uh -huh. and then this is out, and this is out. Just yeah. And then the, the reason why we know this is running, this is the this is the clock. These run as clocks, not MIDI. So that doesn't really. So you have it does matter the way you hook them up. Right. Absolutely. So here we go. Here's this important cable which we use for everything. So this is equal to this cable. Okay. Because this is now. It goes stereo, stereo. to stereo, right. but I put this in the high Z, which I'm running a high Z for the computer as well, if I need to have computer sounds as well, and I'm going to plug this into my Korg. So that's my sound out, and so that's running on 
the high Z. The high Z. So we don't know if I don't know if I need that or not yet. We can check it. So I can turn it up. And that's on channel three. You can... There we go. I can see it now. Awesome. You can you can hear it a little bit different. It's all the way up here. I have a lot of gain. It's just really high. You don't. Yeah. This particular cable and this setup don't really need that. So I mean, if I'm right, mm -hmm. so I gotta turn this on. So now this has a tempo on it. It is not gonna run the tempo with anything I do here. It's only gonna run what the tempo of the Roland is because that's the how the MIDI works out. Mm. So these are my four channels. One, two, three, four. Mm. They're all hooked here. So we got a beat, melodies, and bass lines. Okay. So when I play with the song, um, this is my plug for the... This runs off batteries, but it's a lot better when you can just plug it in. So, so I don't waste my batteries when I'm not needing to. If it, like, you know, unplugs or does anything weird. Cool, cool feature. So, my Tascam is all ready to, to, like, record now. Now I can just, once I get the beat going, whether it's on the computer or the, uh, where's my little mouse? Whether it's on the computer or, uh, or, uh, my hardware I'm ready to record so this will uh, be able to play the computer stuff these microphones um, as well so I'm gonna open up the computer see I can, I'm changing the tempo here it won't change so we can see the tempo change from here mixing everything so how you see the metronome the little light blinking yeah the light bl the light blinking is telling you what the time is so all you have a control of really is the volume and changing the pattern on all these so i can change all these <laughs> So this will almost, it's kind of like looping in a sense, it will do it. Okay, so if you look on the task cam, I'm gonna, I'm plugged in, so I'm arming now, right? And I'm gonna, so if I wanna new, make a new song, I go to song, oops, and create, and then. Trust me, all this is happening. And then I execute, okay, I make a new song. So, storing song. Now I'm, I'm jamming. I... You went to you went to menu, right? Yeah, I went to menu. So I went to menu, and then song, and then create, and then I made a yeah. new track. Nice. So and now I'm oops. Now <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> My computer's trying to make noises too. Um. You're talking about arming the task cam? Yeah, the task cam's ready to go. 
So if I want to come over here and plug in my computer and I want to stop all this, like I could just stop. So I could stop everything, right? And now if I want to make a beat off my computer, you know, I just go in here and, you know, So that's coming out through this. And as you can see, I need the high Z. Because it sounds, without the high Z, it's all. Right. Yeah, so. You got it coming out of channel one. Right. Channel one is that. So I got left, right, pan. And, you know, I have it all mixed up. So if I want to do a beat out of there, you know, then I can be like, okay, want to do a, a beat. Okay, cool. Uh, let me let me pick out a sequencer, okay? And I'll put a bass drum on it. So I, I'm pretty much doing this thing is exactly like this thing, same exact thing. This instrument that's playing on Reason right now, it's a sequencer. I, I'll put the same beat and it'll be like dun dun dun, and it runs exactly the same as all this stuff. And then I'll pick out. Uh, a key so I'll go to instruments and I'll go oh let me pick out some keys and I'll take um, electric piano like I like no wait you know so I'm like running the drums and then I'm going to get my keys here drag that into my sequence right and then I go over to my this is my keyboard that's just like a MIDI keyboard hooked up to my back of my computer I mean most people have a MIDI keyboard hundred bucks anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks you can get them really cheap this was free actually this one and it has a USB on the back mm -hmm. and a MIDI out and uh, you can plug it in I which I have never got it plugged in but it works plugged in it powers on in the back of, it's plugged into the back of this computer so it's running so I can make beats out of it you know so I can literally go so I'm gonna okay I like that right so I'm gonna be like okay record so just like I did here when I press record play on this keys that you just saw me do, I can do that here. So I'm gonna be like, it's gonna count me in on a four bar, cause I'm gonna pre-count it. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now if I wanna use that beat, it is already rolled up going into its armed, right? So it's already, so I'm gonna press play again, down here. It's coming in, ready to go, ready to record, ready to record my beat just the way it is. I don't even have to arrange it or do anything. It's ready to be like, I, you know, I turn off the metronome and ready to record. So like, and the, the thing that brings them all together is that I can record them all onto my multi-track. I don't have to rely on my computer to have all the data. It records onto my multi-track onto a SD card. That's why we have so many SD cards. Onto an SD card. So this is in there. It's ready to armed. It's got a new beat to be made. It's ready to go. So I can record this song. So if, if we're jamming or whatever, it's ready. And then this is where the booth isolation comes in, where Corinne will show you later on in the video why we record the beat separate. And then there's six tracks left for other instruments 
uh, vocals, backings, all that left onto the Tascam. And it is solely made to record. So yeah, I record that and then I'll be like, you know? I can record them together. So if I want, this will record on top of this. So it'll be like the most unique beat and I can't fix it or anything. So that's another thing you start to learn. So there's that, that's my computer beat. So I could stop the computer, boom. And that's done, and I, I'm okay, so I have that going. And then, or I can start it from here. It's kind of loud, I can tell. This, this Roland starts this. So same thing. The B is in sequence now. It's just like this, but in sequence here. All the red spots is where it's hitting. the beat right so I'm like oh sweet and that's how I can record all this live instrumentation onto it so it solves like a major problem it solves a major problem in like how am I gonna make this beat permanent you know because I have to change it or memorize everything or write everything down and it becomes like You know, it becomes like, oh, complicated, like, oh, do I have to program this the same every time? Well, that's true. I mean, and if you make a song that you want that to play live, you can program it. But also when you're jamming and you're feeling like, you know, froggy, you're like, ooh, that's cool what I made up. Okay, okay, cool. And that's when you would have, that's why the task cam is so important. And now all I would have to do is plug my microphone directly into the Tascam and go into the booth in a sound booth in a closet and anywhere and just plug and play right into here on top of it. Then you export it into a WAV file. Then you use a free program like Audacity, which is this program right here. Now Audacity is 
probably one of the best programs like to record sound. I'm surprised more people don't like preach on it for like podcasting and stuff because you can import uh you know an audio file right into it and it just gives you the wave you know I'm gonna import um well, we'll do this uh drop wave because Corinne just did that one that's the one she was recording on earlier so in audacity okay so we just recorded the drop beat okay for Corinne's song so okay let me look at it let me hear it let me let me turn it down first and yeah. then let me see where I'm at vocals in here right and then I would be able to like oh let me uh, this beat's not quite loud enough so I can go oh let me let me duplicate that you know let me come up here uh duplicate okay oh wait okay sorry I have to select it first they changed the selection to white <laughs> <laughs> it used to be gray so now I duplicate it right so in, in audacity which is free and it's been free for years and it's an incredible uh, that don't have you can get plugins for this and everything, but it's incredible the way it is. I say, keep it simple, stupid. Mm. No, there being too many parts in a recording is it it causes losslessness. Now you can hear right now, the way the beat's going because my sometimes my shit. You can hear it's my, it's actually the jacked inputs that's giving me that sound. I know that for a fact because I've tested it. So. I'm turning down my mains a little bit so it's not so loud, but you'll hear it in the beat. So there's another issue, you know, you have to figure out, oh man, are my cables, is everything dusty? Like you saw, I had to, I cover this usually because I keep my windows open. I cover this with a big blanket so I can at least not have dust fall on it. And that's what's awesome about the Korgs. They have like a lot of like enclosed parts, which is smart. That's someone who has dealt with this problem so now I'm in stereo I'm still getting that that buzzy sound right that's from my that's from my uh, inputs and that's just in my speaker so if I got it in the headphones it wouldn't be doing that you know oh so now it's, I gotta take the trim down okay so it was redlining this thing is not a lie. So if anytime you see, anytime you see red, okay, like that's not a lie. This this is not a lie. Like especially digital stuff. You don't need to. There we go. So now I'm the trims all nice. I'm getting as loud as possible. This is my output level. See that's that's where you want it. It's at the most peak without peaking. See, when it hits the bass, then you gotta come back down, come back down. And you can always do that in, in post, like I'm doing now. So what I would do here is, okay, so the beat, it sounds pretty fresh. It's got a lot of meat on it. You can see it's redlining out right now. So what I would do, what I do, is I would stop it. I would pan a little bit one way and a little bit another way. And I'm turning it down a little, you know, because there's no need for that. There's, if you want it loud, you got to pay someone to master your stuff. Mm -hmm. Louder is not better. It, 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 digital uh, peaking, it, it can't be, it's, it's too much. It's a lot. Even if you're distorting all the way and you can keep it into a level, because I don't like to use compression and all that because it's just, it's too many factors. So that's why I still use Audacity. Corinne uses uh, Reaper, and also an incredible DAW, and and uh, not quite free, but you, the, there's a free trial, and then you pay sixty dollars just to have it. And then if you sell a lot of records and you make money, they say, "Oh, give us two hundred dollars," which is like, "Geez, okay, great." <laughs> um, that's not even that much. So here we are. 
See, I got it to turn down, and I'm going to view this in a mixer board up here. So here we are. That That is this, basically. That's the digital mixer board. So you now you can see that I quit making it red line. So I want to still push it up to a to at least like where it's nice and big. Yeah, you see, even panning it really helps, and it already sounds like way better. Yeah, even on the left, it could use it just a little bit. That's why I had it like that. So I'm, a, I'm mixing this in here, and then, oh, I could go harder right here because now I mixed it over here. So there's lots of factors involved, like when you're doing this. You can see, like, this is telling you it's too much. This is telling you it's too much. Your ears know trust that. Your ears. Your, your ear, trust your ears, and also trust, trust this. This is our. I find that Audacity is one of the most trustworthy DAWs in that way. It doesn't like let you push it in the wrong way. It comes from a place of like old school tape reel to reel shit. And like it, you see the wave, you see the wave happening. It's like you know it, where it's at, you know, it has the effects that it has. It's like pretty cool. So I'll, I'll show you some effects. Uh, it won't let you do it while you're playing it. So you gotta stop it. Yeah. And then you go into the effects, and it has Amplify, I've used for vocals that were too low. It's got Bass and Treble, which is like really simple EQ. I wish I could zoom on that, but can't really. Uh, and then it goes all the way down. You got Echo, Distortion. They have a compressor, which if you're in the music world... So this next step of home recording, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need your headphones. You're going to need your home bass for the beats. And you're going to need your microphone, pop filter included. Now, the pop filter serves as a protector against those hard sounds, like those P's, B's, and T's. A necessary addition when home recording, when it involves a microphone. Now that you have all your essentials, we're going to move into the actual recording process. This song is called Too Rare to Care. It's a song I've been writing for some time. And this is my first time recording it, so y'all going to get a first real-time look into what it's like to... Uh, record at home, be in that process, and uh, be in the flow of that. Also, remember, if you have lyrics, have your lyrics, and always have your water. Water is a must, because you must hydrate the vocals. So let's get into it. <coughs> and if you have honey, Get the honey. I don't have my honey right here, but you know, I'm already, I'm already flexing here. Let's go. Lie. Living out visions I knew I would manifest. Giving a test, even in the rest, nobody panic. Everyone stop, everyone drop, everyone roll. I'm coming in hot, ain't no need to feel many. Easier said than achieved, I know. Without that dark, you can't see the glow. I've been not paving a way of flow. Making sure all of my ducks in a row. Looking that way for the bread to fold. Keeping my business like on the low. Bitch, I'm so hip, you would think I'm the bone. It's bigger than laying a double KO. Say. It's bigger than laying a double KO. There's always a game. There's always a plus. The big is a must. I repeat my key to we 
and crowns. I'm a reason to season the meal. I've been prepping to serve the best. All these bots are running out of it. Watch too much news. Fuck the fashions. Didn't get here alone. My people, they ride. You tripping, they cut. Don't get a fuck. I'm certified by God. It's a slap in the Bitch, I'll be dead for you. Catch me out here. My knees look a stuff. I'ma give me a hug. I'ma give me a hug. Mm. Too ready to care. You step in the flare. I was born to stay.